It's Friday, September 16th, and this is now on H&N. I would like a continuance until next week. There's a new deadline set for the extradition of a Waikiki cold case murder suspect. The open question is how long do the Russians make a sweat? President Biden meets with the families of WNBA star Brittany Griner and ex-Marine Paul Whelan. Both are being held in Russian prisons. I'm Skyler Henry at the White House with the latest on the negotiations for their release. I almost feel like I'm suckered in. Tap the screen or leave loose change. Technology is upping the pressure to leave a tip. I'm Elise Preston with a debate over how much gratuity to add and when. Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and the Showtime Lakers reunite on Maui. Hawaii's in the building. These stories plus a sneak peek at the NCIS and NCIS Hawaii crossover premiere. That's coming up on This Is Now. <laughs> Good afternoon. Thanks for watching. This is now on this Aloha Friday. You got Jonathan and Ashley right here in the H&N Digital Center. A lot of news to get to today. That's right. Waikiki cold case murder suspect Tudor Chirilla had some back and forth today with a judge in Nevada about his extradition to Hawaii. Uh, I know you understand these issues. Uh, I don't want to play any games today. I just want an answer of whether you want to waive extradition or you're going to challenge that you're the person named in the warrant. Uh, or that the warrant is not valid. That's what I need to know. Okay. And, and as I was saying, I don't want to waive any of my rights right now. I'm going to give you some, some deadlines to pursue these matters. If it is the identification that you're challenging, I know you keep saying you're not waiving anything. Uh, I asked you if you're the person named in the war in the criminal complaint, you said you are. So I assume you're not challenging that. Well, I'm not challenging the, the name and the spelling. Uh, okay. So what are you challenging, sir? Well, sir, I, I would like a continuance until next week, just so I could decide something. I mean, this is, you know, just caught me. The 77-year-old was arrested at his home in Reno on Tuesday. He faces extradition to Hawaii after his DNA was linked to the murder of 19-year-old Nancy Anderson. It was a 1972 cold case. When asked if he would waive extradition to return to Hawaii, here's what he had to say. Maybe next week I would waive it, but I'm supposed to meet with my social services psychiatrist right about this time. So if you could have somebody call uh, social services and tell them I'm going to be a little bit late. The court has given a deadline for Chirilla to make a decision on extradition. Another hearing is set for next Wednesday. Today, President Biden is meeting with the family members of two U.S. citizens imprisoned in Russia, one being WNBA star Brittany Griner. Now, the White House says the purpose of the meetings are to assure the families that they are top of mind for the president. For the first time, President Joe Biden is meeting in person with the wife of WNBA star Brittany Griner and the sister of ex-Marine Paul Whelan separately on Friday, as his administration works to free both from Russian prisons. The president felt it was important to continue the dialogue with the family members. Griner was arrested on drug charges at a Russian airport in February and later sentenced to nine years in a penal colony. She pled guilty, telling the court she had mistakenly brought vape cartridges containing cannabis oil into the country. No Whelan was detained back in 2018 and later convicted of spying. He says he's innocent. We have put forward a, a substantial proposal to, to Russia. We are looking at additional steps uh, to take uh, to make it clear that countries that engage in these practices will pay a real price. According to a person familiar with the proposal, the U.S. has reportedly offered jailed Russian arms dealer Victor Boot for prisoner swap. The administration is using similar channels it used to free another American, ex-Marine Trevor Reed, earlier this year. Attorney Jonathan Franks assisted in the efforts to bring Reed home after he spent nearly three years in a Russian jail. 
I think we'll eventually get to a deal. The, quest, the, the open question is how long do the Russians make a sweat? Earlier this week, the Biden administration distanced itself from former U.N. Ambassador Bill Richardson's unconnected trip to Russia. Richardson has independently worked on detainee cases in the past. The State Department said any negotiations outside of official government channels could hinder its efforts to get Griner and Whelan released. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. We want to bring in now our London correspondent, Rick Fulbaum, who's there covering the Queen's funeral and all the events leading up to it. Now, Rick, the big story of the day is that long queue, that line people are standing in. How long is the wait to see the Queen? Well, uh, last time I checked, the wait is now 24 hours, which is just unbelievable if you think about it. I don't know what officials were expecting uh, when all of this was planned, but I can't imagine they anticipated the kind of turnout that they're getting. People really want to come and they're willing to wait in line for many, many hours in order to get a couple of seconds uh, in front of the Queen's coffin, which is still in Westminster Hall. She's lying in state. At one point earlier today, uh, Ashley, they actually put a, a pause on allowing any new people joining the end of the line. They didn't want anybody else to come down. They wanted to sort of let the line move its way through before they let new people. And that's the way it stayed for hours and hours until just a couple of hours ago when they decided to lift the pause and now people can get in line once again. Yeah, and you know, when she passed, we saw such like a worldly response from the public as well as celebrities. And there have been celebrity sightings in that line as well, right? Yeah, well, and not really a celebrity sighting in line, but once he got through Westminster Hall, we learned that David Beckham, international soccer superstar, perhaps one of the most famous men here in Great Britain, turns out that he wanted to pay his respects to the Queen. And even though he probably could have pulled a few strings and skipped the line, he didn't. He came down around 2 o'clock in the morning local time. He got in line with a bunch of people uh, who he made friends with. He asked them to please not tweet or share with friends or family that they were standing in line with David Beckham. He bought them donuts to bribe them, and apparently it worked. Uh, and he went through the line, waited for 12 to 13 hours, he said. Uh, and then there's video of him inside uh, paying his respects. Uh, and when he came out, he said he shed a tear, a very touching moment for a very famous man. Absolutely. And the Queen's grandchildren will be participating in a special ceremony tomorrow. What can you tell us about that? So tomorrow night at 7.30 local time here in London, there's going to be a vigil uh, at the site of her coffin. Uh, and it will be attended by all eight of her grandchildren, including Prince William, who is now next in line to the throne, and his younger brother, Harry. Uh, and you remember the controversy with Harry and Meghan and the royal family. Uh, they moved to California. They gave up their royal duties. They gave that interview to Oprah Winfrey that was the talk of the world for so long. Um, and but he is back here in London and has been taking part in different ceremonies related to his grandmother's death. And he will be at tomorrow night's vigil with his cousins and his brother. And he'll be able to wear his military uniform. Uh, protocol here is that once you are no longer a member of what they call the working royals, and he's not, you can't wear military uniforms to official events like this. But King Charles, his father, has given him permission to wear his uniform. Apparently, the Queen wanted that. Uh, and so King Charles will allow it. But if you think, Ashley, that this means a complete thawing of relations between Harry and his family members, not so fast. Uh, I'm told that there is a tell-all book that Harry is putting out later this year that's going to spill even more tea uh, than the gossip that was generated by that Oprah interview. Absolutely. We'll be looking out for that. And speaking of controversy, we're hearing there's some controversy over the guest list for Monday. What do you know about that, Rick? Well, 
Of course, world leaders uh, from all over will be descending upon London. President Biden and his wife will be here. 500, we're told, dignitaries uh, from foreign countries have been invited to, to attend the funeral service on Monday morning. Uh, but included among them is the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, uh, Mohammed bin, bin Salam, and he is a very notorious character. He is blamed for the brutal murder of a journalist, Jamal Khashoggi, uh, and it was Khashoggi's wife who actually said that having him there is a stain on the memory of the queen. But he will be there, uh, and uh, he will be among the 2,000 people who will attend the funeral inside Westminster Abbey, which is just over my shoulder. All right, Rick Fulbaum joining us from London today. Thank you for the time, Rick. Enrollment continues to drop at Hawaii's public schools. Just over 168,600 students are currently enrolled at DOE or state charter schools, down 1.7 percent from last year. And while this partially follows a national trend due to declining birth rates, a DOE official told Honolulu Civil Beat students moving to the continental U.S. are driving the decline. With much of school funding tied to enrollment numbers, officials say they are developing a strategic plan to address the issue. Well, tipping can be a touchy subject, but as Elise Preston reports, generosity that peaked during the pandemic is starting to drop off. I work in health care. Nobody tips me. Sisters Leslie and Susan don't agree on tipping when it comes to purchases outside of a full service restaurant. Sometimes I tip just because they're nice to me, but seriously, I don't feel pressure. Leslie feels it. She says even when swiping her card at kiosks, she always gives a little extra. You didn't do anything. I just walked up to the window and bought it, but you're turning around like for me to leave you a tip. Okay. I almost feel like I'm suckered in. You know, like I got to give something like I'm under pressure a little bit. A recent survey shows tipping for takeout food peaked at the height of the pandemic. While that fell off, it's still up from 2019. You know, with the pandemic, everything changed. Curb service, what were meant to be temporary fixes are now standards. So there is a gratuity that is often expected that goes along with that. On average, Americans are tipping nearly 20 percent for sit-down meals. Gratuities dropped to about 14 percent on other goods and services. And etiquette expert Diane Gotsman says that's okay. You're not expected to leave the same type of gratuity as you would if you were at a sit-down meal. But if you're grabbing a cup of coffee, if you just want to leave the change, if you want to tip up, or if you want to leave a dollar, by all means, feel free to do that. While you may feel like you're being judged, Gotsman says the worker behind the counter may just be looking to help the next customer. Elise Preston, CBS News, New York. Uh, um, <laughs> what? No tip? Really? No, that always gets me, though. Uh, counter service Take versus, out. yeah. yeah. Like, what to do, what to do. And it is stressful, and it can weigh on your conscience mm -hmm. a little bit there. But yeah. always leave a little something, For sure. I, I think. Yeah. I think. All right, let's take you live outside. Take a look at your... <laughs> Aloha Friday, looking pretty out there. Look at those waves rolling in on the south shore of Oahu. Billy V's in for Guy Hoggy today with a look at those waves and an alert for box jellyfish. North Shore is going to be one to three. Uh, it's going to be on the lower side. We got to flat to two on the west side, two to four on the town spots. East side is also two to four, but that's going to be a little bit choppy there. As far as the beach conditions go, 89 degrees is going to be your daytime high. UV index is at nine. There's no marine warnings currently in effect, but I do want to let you know that starting tomorrow, take a look at this. Uh, there's low probability of box jellyfish. It's starting to ramp up Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. That's when you're really going to have to watch out on those South Bay facing shorelines and of course Wednesday they'll be on their way out. So box jellyfish in the water this weekend leading up into next week. Monday on KGMB, the CBS fall season kicks off with part one of a special two hour action packed crossover event with NCIS and NCIS Hawaii. Here's your behind the scenes preview. Oh, hey. Hawaii's in the building. We want to kick off with a literal bang. Good luck. 
We are crossing over. NCIS and NCIS Hawaii are meshing into one huge two-hour season premiere. TNT is back, which is our dynamite tenant in Torres. Agent Torres, it is always a pleasure. We were super excited to have Vanessa and Jay here to show them a little bit more of the Mallard ship and then follow the next episode of that night going to Hawaii. It was just really special to be able to tell a story on such a matter. They're learning the nooks and crannies of our squad room. I'm thrilled these guys are here doing this. This is fun. It's been fantastic. You know, we have the Ohana in Hawaii and they got the family here and it's it's the same now. We really genuinely really love each other. And since we are extended family, we are happy to help Parker in any way that we can. So season 20, we decided to really live the chapter of the Raven and figure out what does it mean to this team? What does it mean to Parker? What is this Raven all about? And it took two shows to unravel this one. This is a very dangerous game that you're playing. It's two hours of nonstop action. It's a collaboration of worlds, which I think is really exciting for people to watch. It's a really well-oiled machine that functions well together. It's gonna be a lot of fun. You might laugh, you might cry to be able to watch two franchises work together. It's gonna be awesome. NCIS, the mothership is on their 20th season. We are on our second season, so we literally are looking up to them. Well, it's your brilliant leadership that got us here. People should watch this crossover because it's what makes NCIS, NCIS. The heart, the humor, the camaraderie, and the family of it. You don't want to miss it. It's gonna set the tone for the entire season. Two hours of just electric. Gorgeous lay there, Vanessa. Again, that's coming up Monday, KGMB primetime. Let's see what else the internet is talking about today. It will certainly be talking about that show in the days to come. But a lot of people still got the queen top of mind. And this, this image is out there on the web. A lot of people tweeting it, really going big on Reddit. It's a recipe. Yeah, a recipe that was included in a letter that the queen sent to the U.S. president, uh, Eisenhower, back in the 1960s, it was in the National Archives, and people have dug this up. So it includes this recipe for pancakes. Mm. Yes, pancakes. The Queen's Pancake Recipe. I think we should try this out on Monday in the kitchen. What okay, do you say? Okay, deal. Yeah, let's do it. Which is also known as drop scones in Britain. Ooh, that yeah. sounds even better. Yeah, so it's a thicker version of the standard American pancake and that goes onto the griddle and droplets. Ingredients are four teacups of flour, four tablespoons of caster sugar, two teacups of milk, two whole eggs, two teaspoons of baking soda, two teaspoons of cream of tartar, which I have no clue what that is, and two tablespoons of melted butter. You mix it all together and you have queen's magic here. The queen says she advised the 34th president Eisenhower. The mixture needs a great deal of beating while making it and it shouldn't stand for too long before cooking. I know what cream of tartar is, but what what's a teacup? I mean, like a measurement of a teacup. Oh yeah, you know what? I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Like an actual, I mean, I know they drink tea there. An actual Yeah, what tea is a cup? Okay, like we're going to have to look that up. There's teaspoons and then teacups. So, yeah, we need some <laughs> translation help out there. So, yes. if you're watching on Facebook, give us some comments and help us out on that one. Please. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I will make it for you. That I, sounds I'm good. I'm going to try. I'll try Drop it. Drop scones. Let's yeah. do it. Well, it's week two of the NFL season, and the Football Night in America team is previewing the Sunday night matchup between the Chicago Bears and the Green Bay Packers. Check it out. Welcome to the Football Night in America studio. Maria, Tony, and Jason here with you. In week two, we have the Packers and the Bears. And we saw Chicago get a win in a rainy fashion uh, against 49ers in week one. It was impressive by Justin Fields. Loved how the Bears played defense today and loved how Justin Fields finished the game. He's going to have to use his feet to make plays. We know that. But he'll get better and better as they go. It'll be a big challenge in Green Bay. Yeah, on the Packers' side, they've got to make some adjustments. Without Devontae Adams, their offense just didn't look like it was in sync. Got to get those offensive linemen healthy, but Aaron Rodgers knows how to bounce back from a defeat. All right, Bears, Packers, we've got you covered with Football Night in America. Join us at 7 Eastern. And since we're talking sports, check this out. The Chicago Bulls jersey Michael Jordan wore uh, in game one of the 1998 NBA Finals, the culmination of the famous season known as The Last Dance. Well, it went up for auction and someone paid 
$10.1 million for it. Now to put that in perspective, the pre-sale estimate was between three and $5 million. This is the most money someone's ever paid for a piece of sports memorabilia that was worn in a game. It's a classic jersey. Oh, jersey. Yeah. It really is. Love those colors. And speaking of NBA legends, this is so cool. The Showtime Los Angeles Los Angeles Lakers reunited with a workout and more on Maui. So Magic Johnson posted that they had so much fun running plays and reliving their practice days. The tight-knit group, which won five titles during the 1980s, became one of the most famous NBA dynasties. Along with Johnson, also spotted Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Byron Scott, James Worthy, and now Miami Heat president Pat Riley, among others. Whoa. Yeah, on Maui. Yeah, they're getting all the celebs these days. <laughs> Oprah, Brittany. all the time. They're on huge parties for mm -hmm. all our friends. Yeah. So, gamers, listen up for this next story because talking about Mickey Mouse. Tron, Avatar, all things coming from Disney to the world of video games. Here's Rick Damagella with more on that. Mickey, Minnie, Donald, Goofy, we bid you welcome. At its annual D23 Expo, Disney's game division revealed several new titles, including Disney Illusion Island. The adventure game will feature four-player co-op and arrives on the Nintendo Switch in 2023. Whoa, slow down there, Mickey. The mouse and a large cast of friends from across the Disney multiverse will soon be hitting the track in Disney Speedstorm. The high-octane kart racer doesn't have an official green flag date yet, but is expected to peel out later this year. There's not much to see yet, but Disney premiered a vague teaser for Tron Identity at D23. The mysterious game is planned for release on Windows and Mac OS next year. More gameplay was revealed from the Marvel Universe's darker side with Marvel Midnight Suns, which is scheduled to arrive across current and next-gen game platforms December 2nd. Other footage reveals included Avatar Frontiers of Pandora and new downloadable content for LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. Disney game fans might need to plan a sick day or two. Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Thanks, Rick. And we have more video game news to get to, this time coming from Sony. Yep, it has unveiled the next generation of VR systems for Play... It's called PlayStation VR 2. The system is designed to use it with PlayStation 5 home entertainment consoles and features 4K HDR display. <laughs> the new features also include finger touch uh, detection, which allows controllers to detect finger movements and to use those to interact with the game. This is really cool. The headset also features new eye tracking functions. Bizarre and fascinating. It allows users to interact with this virtual video game world by just using eye movements and blinking. Amazing. The release date and price for this new PlayStation VR 2 has not been announced at this time. Probably ain't cheap. Nope. Yep. No way. Mm -mm. One last story, you guys. Saturday Night Live has added four new faces. Joining the cast as featured players in season 48 are Marcelo Hernandez. He's a Cuban-Dominican stand-up comedian, writer, and actor who is open for comedians like Jim Brewer and Gilbert Godfrey. Uh, Molly Kearney recently had a part in Amazon Prime Video's A League of Their Own, the TV series, and Michael Longfellow hails from Phoenix. He was recently featured in the Netflix is a Joke, the festival, as a notable up-and-comer. And Devon Walker, he's from Austin. He has writing credits that include Netflix's Big Mouth and Phoebe Robinson's Everything's Trash. Now, SNL saw the departure of multiple veteran cast members at the end of last season, including Pete Davidson and Kate McKinnon. I actually sent this picture to our colleague Casey Lund, and it said, you know you're getting old when SNL cast members look this young. Yeah, right? they really do. Yeah, they're oh, my babies. Boy. That's going to do it for This Is Now on this, what is it? Aloha Friday. Yeah, have a good weekend, everyone. Ashley's still got to be back with you at first at four on KHNL. Have a good one.